Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jacob goes camping. He finds a nice little spot, lays his head on a rock, looks up at the stars. Sounds kind of nice. Peaceful. Take a picture of that and put it on Instagram. Get a bunch of likes. Because we get just this right little glimpse of Jacob. We don't see the rest of his life in this moment, in this text. Jacob is out there camping because he's homeless now. He stole from his brother out of his father's own hand. And now his brother is literally trying to kill him. And his father's heart is broken. Oh, also, his mom put him up to it. Bless her heart. It's one of those families where I'm sure Thanksgiving is not at all a dread. But I don't know if it's going to matter this year or not because dad's real old and his health is failing. And so when Jacob left, he left not knowing whether or not he would see his dad alive in this world again. But, you know, we see him lay his head back camping, look up at the stars, and imagine life's real good for Jacob. Hadn't really changed. As with most of us, the only glimpse of our lives that people actually get to see is what we show them. The parts that we want them to see, the painted parts, the curated parts, the filtered parts. Parts, the parts where we go camping and we show you the sky full of stars and not the family fighting in angry whispers in a tent or crying silently in a sleeping bag. We're very careful how we let ourselves be seen. Because we like the idea of who we're supposed to be. We need other people around town to see it that way, smiling, happy of a good family. And what's absolutely wild is how many of us who would rather have our lives completely fall apart privately than dare look half so bad publicly. And church starts to become a part of it. We go because it looks good. Because it's expected of us. Mumble, I, a poor, miserable sinner with the rest of everybody here, but nobody knows what I mean by it but me, and I like it that way. I don't want anyone to see what I haven't decorated for the picture or orchestrated for the story. And if we are this careful about hiding our lives from each other so that all that we see are the glimpses that we want to share, are you really so sure that you want a God looking down on you from heaven? How is that good? How is that comforting? This idea that he sees all the things that we spend so much time trying to hide. Worse, a God looking down on us from heaven really only makes it seem like heaven heaven is a very, very far place from here. And we can't even entirely decide if we like it that way or not because the idea of a God looking down on us from heaven is intimidating. I'm not so sure that I want to be fully known. I'm not so sure I want God to see everything. But on the other hand, God, do I need some help? And the thing is, if God loves us half so much as he claims to in the book, Him staying up in heaven just to look down on us doesn't really seem like it fits. Have you recognized that a God stuck up in heaven looking down on you in your misery is not a God of love? Forget about a God stuck in heaven. We need one down on earth. If God cared about us in the slightest, he would need to be down here too. When I see my children hurting, I, a poor miserable sinner, know enough as a father to go and hold my kids, not look down on them in their misery. And so God, our Father, will 
not simply stare down from heaven and watch things fall apart. He does not even just drop down a ladder for us to climb our way out if we really, really want to. That is not love. And when God says, I am with you, he means it. Behold, says the Lord, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Thus says the Lord, so God cannot sit up in heaven and look down on you. He needs to descend. He becomes the ladder. Not just so that we can escape someday from this pit after we die, but so that he can climb down into it and rescue us from all of the stuff we are afraid to talk about publicly. He stands as the ladder between us and where we are promised to be. He is Jesus Christ, the Lord, the connection between heaven and earth, the salvation of sinners who cannot climb the ladder out on their own or make the world a better place, no matter how hard they try. And Jacob saw it. There was a ladder set upon the earth. The top of it reached to heaven and behold, The angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Jesus climbs down from heaven, and in doing so gives us more than just a path back up. He unites heaven and earth. These are not separate places anymore. When Jacob recognizes that this is the house of the Lord, he sees that God is truly present and not just talked about. Jesus is actually the gate to better So that whether you see it or not, the Lord is in this place working for you. To change the definition of heaven from a nice place we go after we die to a someday thing, from a faraway thing, into a right now thing, into a right here thing, into a God is present in this place, in this mess, to help these people thing. Heaven is not so far from here, because heaven is simply wherever Jesus is. And Jesus climbs down to earth to save sinners, to save you, to save me, by bearing all that we could not speak on the cross and crying out the words we could not. It is finished. Your sins are forgiven you, all of them. All of the ones you would cover over for Instagram. All of the ones you would mumble, I a poor miserable sinner to, and hope nobody else finds out about. Your sins are forgiven, those sins are forgiven, because Jesus died for you to connect heaven and earth that your salvation would not be based upon your ability to climb out from here. It is the presence of God so powerful that it would overwhelm everything else, carry it, bury it, and rise free from it. So that for everything that you would hide, everything that you are ashamed of, everything that you would leave out of the glimpses, you would show people, you would know that there is a Jesus to descend to save you from that, from yourself. And he has done it. Your sins are forgiven you. The public ones, the hidden ones, all of them. And truly, this is the house of the Lord. We gather around the very same Jesus who makes himself present with all of heaven, with angels and archangels and all of their company. We gather around the very same heaven where we eat and drink his body and blood. We stand shoulder to shoulder with those who have passed before us into glory. We receive Jesus. Behold, this is the gate of heaven on Sunday morning. He delivers more than just a chance to dress up and pretend that everything is fine this day. He gives you forgiveness to cover everything that isn't. Because the Jesus who speaks words to Jacob camping by night speaks to you as well. And he says, in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.